Is it worthwhile for the church to send out missionaries? That great soldier replied with this. What are your orders, sir? Now, the reason I think that's so profound is because he talked about it as a military guy. What is your orders? In a sense, the Lord said the same thing. Is it worthwhile for the church to send out missionaries? The answer is absolutely, because what are our orders? And I put that here for you in this passage. It's our commission. It is not a suggestion. It isn't a a hint from the Lord. It is a commission. It is something that each one of us that is listening to the sound of my voice that is hearing scripture, that you have to answer before the Lord, what are your orders, believer, in getting the gospel to the lost people in the world in which you live? whether it's all the way across the water or is it across the fence or the street. So what I've done here is I've given you four Gospels. Now, I know technically there's three Gospels and then you have another one here, but there's four Gospels. The point I'm making here is that each one of these phrases was taken by the Gospel writer under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, listening and observing the comment that Jesus made after he died but before he went to heaven. So Jesus died, he completed his death and resurrection for the sin of the world, but before he went to heaven, he gave the church, you and me, one last little gig here, one last little reminder of what to do, one last commission, and he did it four different times. Let's look at it, all right? Matthew 28, 19, and 20, it says, Jesus speaking, all authority has been given me in heaven and earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. Now, the phrase go therefore actually means as you're going, assuming that wherever you go, whether it's to the mall, to the marketplace, or to another part of the world, wherever God sends you, wherever you are, are uh, um, permitted or prescribed to go, wherever that might be, what you're to do while you're going there is to make disciples of all nations. Now, this is a huge phrase here because it says make disciples of all nations or all people groups. Now, let's go to the next one, Mark sixteen fifteen. Jesus said to his disciples, Go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone everywhere. That's the New Living Translation. Luke then picked up the words of Jesus and recorded them this way. Then Jesus said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ, the Messiah, that's what it's saying, to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name to all people groups, all nations. Where do you begin? Right where you are. So that'll preach right there, right where you are, right in your neighborhood, right in your job, right in your school, right in your club, right in your committee, wherever you are, you're Jerusalem, and you are witnesses of these things. Then and finally, our passage, John 20, 21. So Jesus said to them again, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And it might be good for you to remember, Jesus said this, I came to seek and to save that which was lost. So if we're to mimic Christ, then we have come to this point in our walk with God to seek those who don't know Christ as Savior and communicate the gospel to them. Now, let me one more time speak to you in a general fashion. More specifically, consider doing missions, consider becoming a pastor, whatever. Now, in a general fashion, I would like you to think of this way. Some of you cannot go into all the world. Carol and I went to Myanmar. We've been to Indonesia, or I've been to Indonesia, been other places in the world. That's because people had the money to send me and permitted me to go to those places. I'm not great. That just happened. That's God's sovereignty in my life. But for you now, you might not have the money nor the means nor the time to go do that. But isn't it remarkable that some of you do have an opportunity? It's not a guilt statement. It's not a manipulation. It's a truth statement. Some of you have been given by prescription of the Lord or permission to go on vacation. So you get out of your little world and your little community here on Oahu and you go somewhere. Some of you have some whatever reason allowed to go to a job that has sent you for a short term somewhere else. At that brief moment, that is almighty God. Listen, that is almighty God that is allowing you through the funding of someone else to take you off this island somewhere because you are a Christian to bloom where you're planted somewhere else. So when you go, you might be thinking it's because... The chief butcher, baker, candlestick maker is sending you. In reality, you might think it's to do your job, and it is, and you want to do it well, as unto the Lord. But at the same time, is it, though, an opportunity for you, whether it's on the plane or another conveyance, to communicate the gospel clearly? So look at it as a divine, wonderful, golden, God-given opportunity for you to be taken to another part of the world to do that. 
You know, as I went through these passages, it's interesting how that three times it talks about Jesus saying that he was sent. And three different times it talks about we being sent. So how much of this is together is so profound that just like Jesus, we're to be doing the same thing. So today, in the limited amount of time I have, I'm going to attempt to answer three questions. Where do I go? Why do I go? And how do I go? Well, let's look again at John 17, verse 18, Jesus speaking. Where do I go? He says, as you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. So the answer is simple. I am to go into all the world, all right? I have two young people here, and some of you, I hope you appreciate the fact that we try to have our young people engage in our messages here so they can be a part of it. So I'd like to have Fernando and Elizabeth come at this time, if you will, and they're going to help me uh, with a map. Let's come quickly, young people, if you'll do that. I have them have a a map and this is on a piece of cloth and they're going to kind of snap it out here hold it up high where everybody can see it maybe one more step down there you can hold it up so they can see it because I'd like to now talk a little bit about the word world when it says that we're going to go into all the world and preach the gospel he says I was sent into the world in John 17 alone there's three different worlds that are either mentioned described or at least inferred And I wanted you to see the three of them because they all fit together in global evangelism. The first one is called the created world. And look, if you will, at John 17, verse 5 and 13, and I'll read it to you. It says, And now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they also may have joy, my joy, fulfilled in themselves. All right, the second is going to be the evil world system. Verse 14 through 16 says this, Jesus again speaking, I have given them your word, Father, and the world, the evil system, has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, that's a very important statement, but that you should keep them from the evil one implied in the world. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. All right, we're going to talk about the world system here for just a moment. In America... The world system is a system that's an evil world system. The very best that it does in our system is it will tolerate Christians as long as Christians are not trying to share the gospel. As soon as we begin to share the simple plan of salvation because we desperately don't want people to to spend eternity separated from the Lord, they immediately caricature this by the word proselytize. You're proselytized. It's in your faith. And you're making your new. And they get all on top of us. So now it's been a movement from tolerance to intolerance to downright hatred to do whatever they possibly can to make a joke out of Christianity while at the same time allowing others and promoting their own glorified position of their own belief system. This is this evil world system that we are a part of. It is wicked. It's going to continually get, here it is, worse and worse according to the passage of scripture in 1 Timothy. So it is going to get worse and worse in this world system. So we're to go into the planet and we're to go into this ugly world system that God has out there that we need to penetrate with righteousness and truth by our lifestyle and by our spoken word. The third world is a simple world of humanity. That's the lost humanity. It says, as you sent me, Jesus, into the world, I also have sent them into the world or into the world of humanity. This morning, because I wanted to have the numbers as fresh as I possibly could, I went to a website that would be the world population uh, totals. It came out of Berkeley, California, and at 9 a.m., 9.55 a.m. this morning, would you like to know how many people, according to them, are spinning on our globe? We had 6,845,979,106. Now, I'm going to tell you, you have on this little clock on the internet, you could then stop it, and then you can hit the resume. So you can stop it so you can write the numbers down. Then you hit the resume because then it speeds up and it catches up with all the births and the deaths and all of that coming up with the total. So again, 6,845,976,000. I said that to say this. Since 10 o'clock until the time it is right now, we've now gone from 6,845,000 Excuse me, 6,845 million to 6,846 million. And you can only imagine that tonight when you go back to your computer and you go to that world clock and you find out how much 
people are now being procreated and the world is populating, our humanity is getting huge. More and more people are being born and more and more Christians need to be sharing their faith. You're listening to Make It Clear with the teaching of Dr. Stan Pons, founder of Make It Clear Ministries and president of Florida Bible College in beautiful Orlando, Florida. Make It Clear is dedicated to taking the Word of God with clarity into every person's world. It is the support of listeners like you who make the ministry of Make It Clear possible. You can provide your tax-deductible gift to Make It Clear online by going to makeitclear.org. Or you can mail your gift to Make It Clear, P.O. Box 607-901, Orlando, Florida, 32860. Thank you for helping us make it clear. If you would like to have Dr. Pond speak at your church or event, please send us an email at tellmemore at makeitclear.org. Thank you, and remember to make it clear.